Okay, in this lesson, what we're going to investigate is infinite geometric series. Uh, the definition of an infinite geometric series is a geometric series with uh, an infinite number of terms. Or in other words, there is no last term, so you would add terms continuously forever. Um, what we're going to investigate is that there are two different types of infinite geometric series. Uh, one type of infinite geometric series is called a convergent series, and we'll define that after we investigate. And the other type that we're going to investigate is what is called a divergent series, which we'll investigate here in this next example. Uh, <clears throat> so let's investigate this. Uh, what it says is for each geometric series, what we would like to do is state their common ratio, add the first eight terms, and predict if the infinite sum, which is sum of infinite terms, would approach a fixed value or not. Um, so in this first example, 2 plus 4 plus 8, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, going on forever, the common ratio for this particular uh, infinite geometric series or geometric series would be uh, 2, because you're multiplying 2 to get from one term to the next. Uh, if I add the first eight terms, the sum of this would be 510, uh, 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32, uh, etc., uh, all the way up to 256, I believe, if we add all of those up, we do get a sum of 510. Uh, and part C says predict if, I did this forever, if it would predict, uh, approach a fixed value. Um, as these numbers are getting larger and we keep adding larger and larger and larger numbers forever and ever and ever and ever, uh, this will actually just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So in answer to the question, would it approach a fixed value or not? Uh, the answer is no, it would not approach a fixed value. Uh, because it would just the sum would keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, let's look at ne another example before we define convergent and divergent series. Uh, first thing is state the common ratio: one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, to get from one term to the next, we are always multiplying by a half. Another way to find the common ratio always is to take any term and divide it by the term before it if it's geometric. Uh, but our common ratio here is a half. Uh, if we add the first eight terms, which I have already here ready on the calculator, so 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth, the 16th, the 32nd, the 64th, and 100, and 1 over 1 28th. Uh, we have a sum of 1.9921875. Uh, and in answer to C, <clears throat> if we kept doing this, so if I added um, a 256th, a 512th, a 1024th, etc., etc., and hit equals, and I did this forever until I was dead or beyond that, uh, you would actually find out that this sum would never get bigger than 2, um, which is interesting. How could, a num how could an infinite number of terms have an actual sum? Um, <clears throat> but in this particular case, we'll investigate that more deeply in a minute, uh, it would actually approach a fixed value. So here, um, the answer here would be yes, and I'm just going to put like here, looks like the value that it would approach, or the sum that it would approach, is 2. Okay, so let's define a convergent and divergent series. Um, a convergent series is that the sum does approach a fixed value. So this here would be called a convergent series because it, because it converges to a sum of 2. Um, and in order to investigate how that happens, well, the re convergent series are defined um, as long as the terms are getting closer and closer to zero. Or in other words, in order for these terms to get closer and closer to zero, zero the fixed or the common ratio, I should say, has to be between negative one and positive one um, because those common ratios would make these numbers smaller or getting closer to zero. And as we add uh, infinite number of times, numbers are getting closer and closer to zero. It will approach a fixed value. On the other hand, a divergent series, which would be defined by the first example we did, uh, is that the sum, not the sun, uh, should say the sum uh, does not approach a fixed value. So in other words, it diverges. It just keeps going further and further and further out. Uh, an infinite geometric series is divergent if, defined by the common ratio, if the ratio is either greater than or equal to 1, that will cause the numbers to not get closer to 0 or to expand, uh, or if the common ratio is less than or equal to negative 1. That would define a divergent geometric, infinite geometric series. How we're going to do is look at the formula and investigate three problems. Uh, the formula says here, the sum of a convergent infinite geometric series, and important, it must be convergent, so you have to define if it's convergent or not first, um, is given by this formula. The sum of infinite terms is equal to term 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. Uh, so you're only allowed to use this formula again if it's a convergent series, or if the terms are getting closer and closer to zero uh, as you are adding them. 
Uh, so we're going to look at three here. For each infinite geometric series, to determine if it is convergent or divergent, determine the sum if it exists. Uh, in this particular case, we have to investigate the common ratio. The common ratio here, you could investigate it more deeply if you take any term and divide it by the term before it. I promise you'll get a common ratio of one-third. Um, what that is, that is between negative one and positive one. So the terms will get closer and closer to zero. So what that means is that it's, it is convergent means that it will have a sum, so we're allowed to use a sum formula. Uh, the sum of infinite terms would be the first term, which is 1 in this case, over 1 minus the common ratio, which is negative a third. Uh, so the sum of infinite terms would be 1 over, and this would be 4 thirds, and 1 divided by 4 thirds is equivalent to 1 times 3 quarters. So this would approach 3 quarters. So what that means is if I added this geometric series forever and ever 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 and ever, eventually it would approach or get really close to a sum of 3 quarters. Uh, in this next example, what you'll notice, and you could even answer this right away, uh, but the common ratio here is negative 3. So the numbers, as they keep going, are getting larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, so further and further away from 0. So what that means here is that it's divergent. So in answer to B, uh, determine the sum if it exists. There is no sum. So if you put this into the formula, you would get an answer, but that answer is incorrect because there is no sum. Uh, so you just have to be careful with that. If it's a divergent series, there is no sum. Uh, as a final example, uh, you'll see here this is 4 plus 4 times 2 thirds plus 4 times 2 thirds squared, etc. So uh, what we're multiplying to get from one term to the next all the time is 2 thirds. So our common ratio is 2 thirds. So that means that the terms are getting... Uh, smaller and smaller and smaller, or closer and closer to zero, so it's convergent. So our sum in this particular case, there would be one, uh, would be our first term, which is 4, over 1 minus our common ratio, which is 2 thirds. So that would be 4 over 1 third, which would be 12. So this would approach a sum of 12.